Hi, and welcome to the MVAC Lab. I'm research intern Cindy Kotchik. Today, we're going to cover a key field method archaeologists use to survey areas for archaeological sites, shovel testing. Archaeologists employ shovel testing to see what's below the surface and search for artifacts when there's too much vegetation or disturbance to see the original ground surface. Any artifacts found and their distribution throughout the area tested help us to determine if any sites are present and begin to define their boundaries. Shovel tests or shovel test pits, often called STPs, are usually around 30 centimeters up to 50 centimeters in diameter and up to about one meter deep, normally closer to 30 or 40 centimeters deep around the cross. They are dug from the surface down through the soil profile until they reach sterile soil that has little or no chance of having cultural deposits. This is usually marked by a color change, often darker topsoil to lighter subsoil in the La Crosse region, and possibly a change in soil texture. We normally place shovel tests 15 meters or about 50 feet apart, or closer in an area of high probability for archaeological sites and we align them in rows or transects within the project boundaries. Now, let's dig deeper into shovel testing. Check the timestamps in the description box to jump to a specific section. Before we go out into the field, we need the right equipment and supplies. For digging the actual hole, a sharpened spade, and a quarter inch screen, along with a tarp to catch the soil and pour it back into the hole. We'll also want a trowel and a probe to take a small sample to view underlying soils if needed. A tape measure to measure depths of shovel tests. And a larger tape if needed for measuring distances to landmarks or landscape features. Any maps, air photos, or project plans needed for keeping track of locations. A notebook and pencil, as well as Munsell soil color charts to record field notes and soil characteristics. Bags for collecting artifacts and a permanent marker to label them, a GPS unit for viewing the project area and taking points when artifacts or features are found, a safety vest for visibility, gloves to protect the hands from sharp artifacts and plants, and copies of any permits or documentation from the client that are needed to show we have permission to dig. We also want to make sure utilities have been marked with pin flags and spray paint by the agency responsible for that, like Digger's Hotline in Wisconsin. This will help us to avoid hitting buried cables or pipelines. We'll watch for those in the field and dig a safe distance away from them and any other possible hazards that could endanger us or others. We've done background research on the geography of the project area and any nearby or overlapping sites as well. So we have an idea of the conditions and landscape in which we will be working and what we might find. And what might we encounter? Artifacts, most often flakes and other stone, sometimes pottery shirts, but we watch for any cultural material. Sometimes we find historical artifacts, like pieces of bottle glass, ceramics, and metal-like nails. We might come across clearly modern garbage as well, such as bottle caps or wrappers, which we might note but will not collect. In addition, we watch for large, flat, or shaped rocks that could be parts of historic foundations or flagstones. Natural objects, such as rocks or roots, 
sometimes look like artifacts. So a keen eye is important to not accidentally discard artifacts that look natural and to avoid collecting non-cultural material. Regardless of whether we find artifacts, every shovel test will have soil. And we want to document the different soil types present to compare with expected soil types for the area, note disturbances, and identify buried surfaces and features. We want to record these for context, evidence of cultural activity, and to understand the history of the landscape. We start the hole by using a sharpened spade to dig an outline with the proper diameter, again about 30 to 50 centimeters. We've picked a location as it fits within the grid of transects or other testing strategy for the project, making sure to avoid utilities. If this were in a more wooded area, we would clear away any debris like leaves or twigs to more easily see the surface. We usually examine, but do not dig in locations that are steeply sloped or in wetland, where we know people would not have camped or settled. After making that rough outline, we can remove a cap or plug of sod, mainly with roots from the grass or other vegetation on the surface, and set it aside to put back at the end. Now, we dig a test down into sterile subsoil, watching for soil characteristics and changes with depth. All the soil will go through the quarter inch mesh screen to separate artifacts from smaller soil particles and pebbles. And the tarp below will collect the soil and rocks to return to the hole. For greater detail and control, we might dig and set levels like 10 centimeters or dig within zones, such as keeping the disturbed plow zone separate to see if there are any cultural materials below the plow zone. We would record the soil and any artifacts in each level or zone to see how the artifacts relate to the soil formation process. We might also dig deeper and use a probe or auger to record a fuller soil profile and better understand the landform being tested. Then we screen the soil and look for artifacts. We look through any rocks left in the screen and check any that appear culturally modified. If we find no artifacts, the test is considered negative and we can move to the next hole in the transect, usually 15 meters away or closer. Again, that's about 50 feet. We normally pace out our steps to measure that distance. If we encounter something like an artifact, the test is considered positive. We mark the point with a GPS unit and collect the artifacts in a bag, labeled with the project, the site if within a known one, location information like the area, transect, STP number, and waypoint number, date, and initials. Then we usually bracket the hole with additional tests five meters in each cardinal direction. This way we can determine the extent of the possible site or artifact scatter. If we are within an already recorded site, we might not bracket because the site's existence is already known and we would be disturbing the site without contributing further information on its boundaries. If only one or a couple of artifacts are found, then it or they might be considered an isolated find. They are still important but not considered a site with intense or extended activity. Even if it is negative, we record and photograph the shovel test to know what we observed and found. This includes its location and a soil profile with depth from the surface in centimeters showing the layers from topsoil into subsoil, as well as descriptions of soil texture and soil color using a Munn cell chart. Here, after matching up the horizontal and vertical readings corresponding to different color chips, we have a 10YR33, the Munn cell designation for dark brown. Using sketch maps along with GPS points and mapping software like ArcGIS, we can plot the shovel tests to find where the positive ones cluster, indicating a previously unrecorded site or providing more information if we are within a previously recorded site. 
We can also better understand how positive and negative tests relate to the surrounding landscape and nearby sites. Before moving on to the next shovel test, we return all the soil to the hole, replace the cap, and press it down to level out the location and restore the surface. Shovel testing helps us to evaluate whether there are sites in an area and gives an idea of their extent. It also provides information on soils, contributing to our knowledge of the local geology and land use history. After shovel testing in the field, we analyze any artifacts found, compile a report, and submit the results of the project to the Oversight Agency, usually the State Historic Preservation Office or SHPO. The information is kept on file for use by project planners and to help with future studies. The next steps depend on the project. If we encountered artifacts and identified sites, we might evaluate them further by digging formal excavation units to look for intact cultural deposits below the topsoil. Or the project might be redesigned to avoid the area and protect the sites. Small shovel tests can certainly go a long way in building archaeological knowledge and setting the stage for future investigations. For more information, see the description box. And to further explore archaeological topics, find links to MVAC social media, and to view and subscribe to our monthly e-news, check out the MVAC website. You can also donate online to support MVAC's work, including our videos. Thanks for watching.